healthy. In the previous video, we showed you one example how to use the Gauss elimination method to solve a set of linear equations. In this video, we'll apply the same method on a different set of linear equations. You can see there are three variables, x, y, and z, and three equations here. So if we write these into the matrix form, we'll get something like this. If you recall what we did in the previous video, the final matrix form we would like to achieve is like that. You can see this part of the matrix is zero. There is a special name for this type of matrix called row echelon form. Let's start the Gauss elimination process. So the first entry we like to eliminate is this one here, the first entry of the second row. In order to remove this entry, what we need to do is row two, multiply by three and divide it by two, then minus row one. The second row multiplied by three over two will have three, three over two, three over two, and a zero. The first row, let's just write it, that's three, two, one, three. After the subtraction, we have zero minus half, half, and minus three. So we can construct the new matrix with the new row two. In this new matrix, row one and row three are the same. Row two is new. The next step is to remove the first entry of the third row. What we can do is to use row three minus two times row one. Row three is simply six, two, four, six. And two times row one is six, four, two, six. Doing the subtraction, we have 0, minus 2, 2, and 0. Now rewrite the new matrix. Row 1 and row 2 will be the same as the previous one. Row 3 will be new. Next, we'll remove the second entry of the third row. What we can do is to multiply row 2 by 4 minus row three. Row two multiplied by four will have zero minus two, two, and minus 12. For row three, that's zero minus two, two, and zero. Doing the subtraction, we have zero, 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 and minus 12. The new matrix we have will be something like this. What the last row of the new matrix tells us is 0 times z is equal to minus 12. Therefore, there's no solution existing. Let's think about why in some linear systems they have unique solutions while others do not have solutions. If we have three equations with three unknowns, each linear equation can be viewed as a plane in the 3D space. Whether we have a unique solution or not depends on how they intersect with each other. Here are five possible ways for those planes to intersect. In the first case, all three planes, they intersect at a single point. So we have the unique solution. For cases 2, 3, and 4, there's no unique intersection among those three planes, so no solution. In the very last case, all three planes they intersect at one line, so we have infinitely many solutions. If we extend the linear system into four 
five, six or more unknowns. We are going into a higher dimensional space, but the concept of whether we have a unique solution or not remains the same. In the next video, we'll move to a new topic called the determinant of a matrix.